Lord. The praise is not for me, but are you here to praise the majesty, the power, and the glory is Jesus? It doesn't matter whether it's cold outside or if it's warm in here. We are here to praise your majesty. For you, God, are King of kings, Lord of lords. And we are here to give you the fruit of our lips. We are here to give you of our breath. For only through the Holy Spirit are you able to call him Lord. You can only say that Jesus is Lord because of the Holy Spirit. Can we give the Lord a praise for the men and for the music ministry? Not to exclude those that ushered in the presence through our praise team. Can we give the Lord a praise for the glorious worship up into this appointed time? The time in which we've come not to see what I'm wearing or to hear what I might have to say but we come because we want to hear what thus saith the Lord. And the question is, is there a word from the Lord? And the answer is affirmative. There is a word from the Lord on today. And today we are going to examine St. Matthew's chapter 15. We'll be walking through verses 21 through 28 from the New Revised Standard Version. But I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles to our key verse, which is verse 28. And once we have found that in our Bibles and on our tablets and or phones, if I can have a hearty amen to let me know that we are all at the same address. Amen. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And a daughter was healed. Instantly, As you are prayerfully considering what the Lord has to say on today, say with me, persistent faith. Persistent faith. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we have been in worship to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But now is the appointed hour where we ask, Lord, that your spirit prevail, that your spirit empower, that your spirit anoints, heals the ills and the woes of these that are in your company, not just these that are in this sanctuary, but even those that are tuning in on our YouTube page or our Facebook page, we ask for an instant healing because there is persistent faith in your kingdom. And we just ask, Lord, now that I decrease and you, Lord, increase, that the words and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. From my lips to the waiting hearts and ears and temples that are present and even on the airways, bless even now through your spirit that that which they hear entered into the hearts of men so that they will know that you are God and besides thee there are none other. We thank you and we praise you in advance for the healing that you're going to do. Amen. Amen. 
you may be seated in, in the house. Today, our lesson is going to be about faith that is not discouraged, a faith that is not deferred, a faith that is not deterred, and a faith not distracted. Not even by silence. Do you notice that when it gets silent, we become uneasy? Because we're anticipating some type of response. Jesus said, woman, your faith is great. Let it be so according to your desires. Is there anyone in the house today that has come with a desire, a request from the Lord? Do you not know that this is the house of prayer and it is also a hospital? It is a place where we bring those that are ill so that they can come to be healed. Your desires can be fulfilled. Wow. How did this mother, who was not a Jew, obtain such faith? How does this story, according to the Gospel of Matthew, what does it tell us about Jesus? Well, we know that he had just left Galilee and Jerusalem and he headed north to a region of Tyre and Sidon. Well, let us pause right there for a minute because Tyre and Sidon is a Gentile territory. And what do we know about this region? It is the Canaanite area, and Matthew is using this to define that this is a woman that is a pagan. And in the Jewish mindset, they are considered dogs. Do you have people in your life that you consider a dog? Someone that's beneath you. Maybe even a pet. See, some people love their pets more than they love the human beings. And I know I'm talking right. Because they will fight for a pet, a dog, before they would fight for black lives. See, some of us, you know, there's this controversy that's going on with, with, with showing appreciation with a, a blue ribbon. But do you not know the truth is that blue ribbon only came because black lives were being killed by the uniforms in blue. And I'm not saying that, that we should not support those that are supposed to protect and serve, but we know that there are some mean, bad, and evil people in blue that take and hunt us as prey. And I'm here to speak truth to power. Because just because they wear the uniform don't mean that they're here to protect and serve. And they only have the blue matter and the blue ribbon because of their response to us telling them that our lives matter. And we need to remember those things when we see the politicians talking and to going back and forth in a conversation. Don't let them forget that they have been brutalizing and terrorizing black men for more than 400 years and slavery has been over for over 400 years. Yet they can kill us and not be persecuted or go to prison. But we, the community of faith, have to 
remember that we have a God that is faithful, a God that is able to heal even us in the times that we live in, both then and even now. But here, the people in blue may have thought of us as dogs and not worthy of justice, not worthy of protection. And they show it the way they treat us. Our Sunday school lesson says that you show your faith by example of how you live. So when we look at the politics and we look at how they live and do policy, we don't care what comes out of their mouth in regards to whether or not they claim to be Christian. You show me your faith by what you do. And here, this lesson is going to unfold as Jesus is trying to teach a lesson here. So don't be distracted, don't be deterred, and don't be discouraged because there's going to be some tough phrases and there's going to be some things within this scripture that's going to cause us to wrestle. It's going to cause us to have some tension and uneasiness. And yes, there's an issue in the back of our church, but I'm going to ask you to pay more attention to the word because the attention is being given to the one that has a medical need. And if you want to do something, you need to pray. You don't have to know what's going on. Just pray for the individual that the Lord will strengthen because you're already distracted. And God says that this lesson is to teach us not to be distracted or discouraged, but to have faith in the one that is able to do more than we can think, hope, or even imagine. This is a very important lesson on faith. How many of you know that the possibilities are only a trust away? Is it possible that people who we consider beneath us and not worthy of our eyes or attention or our money deserve the benefits of God? No. Is it possible that such people that stand on the street corners that have lifestyles that are different than ours? Is it possible that, that they could have stronger faith than we have who come into the house of God? Is it possible that what was going on in the house of Israel is the same in modern day Christendom today? See, faith is not based on a culture, and it's not based on a race. Because everybody has faith. But what do you trust in? See, faith is the confidence of that which we hope for will actually happen. In various circumstances, we live out what we believe because of our faith. Even though we can't see it, we still act on it because it gives assurance of what we think will happen. But what does it mean to live by faith? I would strongly suggest that in various situations and circumstances and realities or dilemmas, we live out what we believe. Everybody's watching us. As Christians, do we believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder for those who seriously seek him, not occasionally date him? Oh, yeah. I said that. 
I'm going to say it again because we have to realize that the Lord is looking for people that really believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those that seriously seek him. I mean, God is first on priority. He's not last on the list. I don't put my family before him. I don't put my children before him. I don't put the sports of my job before him. Because he has to be first. And see, when you seriously seek God, it means you are a God chaser. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. And if you want to know where I'm at, the address is Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 1 was talking about the definition of faith. But how do you live by faith is actually in Hebrews 11, 6. What will people say about your character? Because of what they see in you. Yeah, think about that. Selah. That's Hebrew for think about it. Pause for a moment. Let that sink in. None of us can say that we have seen God, but we have faith that he is. Those that live by faith take confident action based on what God has revealed about his character, seeking to do his will in all things. Somebody say all things. All things. I want to do your will in all things. Say that. Oh, now you said it. Now we're going to see whether or not you're going to do it. Are you a God chaser? Do you hunger and thirst after him and his righteousness? For how many know that if you are a God chaser, you have the potential for actually pleasing God? Or even is that on your radar? Because 11.6 in Hebrews says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he is. Somebody say, you are God. Even if I don't recognize you, you are God. We're not even going to get to the reward because you exist. You are God. Even if I don't recognize you, you're still God. But then when we seek him, there's some benefits our Bible tells us. He said that he is a rewarder of those that seriously seek him, seriously chase after him. We have been studying on wow evening, and we've been studying on hearing God and reading and studying the word of God as we try to get a stronger grip in the, on the Bible. And Jesus taught us a very mighty lesson in Matthew 11 just four chapters before this one. And this is what Jesus says that he's about to drop in the disciples' ear. He says that it is determined by your willingness to accept what I'm about to say. So that means Jesus says that I can speak until your ears fall off. But if you are not willing to accept what I'm about to tell you, then it just falls on rocky ground. What Jesus was about to drop on his disciples is something that the Jewish believers are still wrestling with today. He tells them, if you are willing to accept and receive and believe, you see that? Willing to accept, willing to receive, 
and willing to believe that the spirit of Elijah is John the Baptist. Now see, when Jesus said that, that was hard for them to accept. How could John the Baptist be the spirit of Elijah? So when we look at verses 11 through 15, Jesus is teaching he is the Messiah. Why? Because Elisha's spirit has already preached the one sermon in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Make way straight for him to come. And they did not want to get out of their own way or their own agenda. They couldn't accept that Jesus said that John the Baptist is the one that you're looking for. They're looking for that old prophet that God took up. But little do they know Elijah, Moses, and Jesus had a meeting on the Mount of Transfiguration. And they had a discussion in regards to Jesus and what he needed to do in to go into the cross. See, Moses' body was never find and found and neither was Elisha's body found because God just took them. And then they had a, a transfiguration moment. But there were three witnesses. And Peter, as he is, always said, we should stay right here on this mountaintop. It is good for us to be here, seeing Jesus in his transfigured form. But if they stayed there, there would have been no cross. There would have been no redemption. That just would have been an on-the-mountaintop experience. How many know that we can't live on the mountaintop? But sometimes we got to go through a valley. Sometimes we got to go through the shadows of death. But we have to know that we're not there by ourselves, but it is God himself that is right with us. We have to realize that only God is the one that's teaching this lesson. So anytime we see Jesus say, verily, verily, I say unto you, or verily, verily, I tell you the truth, we need to pay close attention and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to give us understanding because we can't get God's word unless we first receive, accept, and then get an understanding. You can't put your faith in action unless you have an understanding of the word and then your understanding will be your motor operandus to go forward and exercise your faith based on your understanding of what Jesus has just said. That's how we act and we can only do because our faith demands we show others, not with our mouth, but because of our doing. Not our deeds, but the deeds are motivated because of what our understanding is of what Jesus is saying. That's the only way we can please God. Are you a God pleaser? Or do you satisfy your own desires? Yeah, that's right. Wow is right. There's going to be some people that's going to need new shoes. This woman is not named, and, and she is defined by the region in which she comes from. She's a Syrophoenician woman with a demon-possessed daughter. Right there, we, we can pause because you can't let people define you based on where you live or where you come from or what kind of job you have. What kind of resources are you rocking with? You got to know that you are a person and that God loves you because he loves you and it doesn't matter where you come from. 
Many people self-identify and live in hell because of where they came from. But God is above culture. He's above station. He's above class. He's above gender. He's even above the religious disciples. See, in the story, it says that she was defined. She's a Canaanite woman that was desperate for a deliverance and the healing of her daughter. Well, what do you do when your culture stands in the way? What do you do when your station and class stands in the way? What do you do when your gender is in the way? She cried out, the Bible says, right? But what do you do when you cried out to the Lord, help me? And Jesus says not a word. What do you do when Jesus is silent? You're in his presence and you've taken the position. You come Sunday after Sunday and you are in need of something. Yet God says not a word. Does your faith demand that you not be discouraged because Jesus is silent? Or do you run to someone else because you're seeking a response? You run to another church because you're seeking another response. You church hop because you're seeking a response. What is it? that causes us the uneasiness when Jesus is silent. Do you keep on? Are you persistent? When Jesus' disciples says, send her away, she's bothering us. They come to the house of God and, and because the house of God is supposed to be a place of healing, we, we, we come and we realize that even the deacons or the ministers or the preacher says, go away, you're bothering us. You see, Jesus didn't even acknowledge you. Go away. What do you do when even the leadership tries to send you away when you are in desperate need of something? This Seraphonician woman, woman wanted a healing. She was needing something from God that only God can deliver. Her daughter was demon-possessed. How many of us have children that are possessed with something other than God? We don't want to talk about demon possession in 21st century church. But I want to tell you something, church. The demons are still here. And they are still occupying and taking residence. And they love to have our children to destroy them, to discourage them, to deter them from what God would have them to be. But we have to be persistent in our faith. We got to be persistent in our worship. We got to be persistent as we chase God, even when he's silent. And others are telling us to go away. You're bothering us. This is kind of uneasy when we read this scripture and we just rest here for a while. Because it's going to get even rougher in here in a minute. There's one thing that's very important. How did this Canaanite woman find Jesus when he had left Jerusalem and he's in their region. It must mean that she must have heard somebody talk about this man called Jesus. 
See, his popularity had preceded him, and when he goes from place to place, the word gets out. But in 21st century church, how does the word get out that the word is being preached right here? Unless you spread the good news. Huh? It says that she came pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. If you're underlining your Bible, that's something that you need to underline. My daughter has a demon in her. And she's severely tormenting her. This demon is tormenting her. Can you see the pain of this mother? Can you feel the pain of this mother that is pleading with Jesus that has come to their region? There's nobody like Jesus. But then there was nobody like this woman, not even in Israel. Because see, we have to be careful now. See, when we properly read this scripture, she called him Lord, have mercy, don't give me what I deserve, but have pity on me. You are son of David. Not even in Israel and Jerusalem did Jesus hear that. What did she do? She came into the presence As a chaser of Jesus, she saluted him as Israel's promised deliverer, son of David, Israel's promised deliverer. And Jesus answered not a word. I'm quite sure that Jesus is wondering, how is it that this woman is calling me the Meshua? She's a Canaanite. Hmm, I was just in Jerusalem and those Pharisees didn't call me son of David. (laughs) See, that's why I said that this scripture, when you just read it and you don't really get into it, then you don't do the justice that God wants us to get from it. Jesus, I need you now. I'm urgent. I'm desperate for you. It's nothing that Jesus can't do. And I have to not get anxious. I can hear this woman saying, because he's saying nothing to me. I addressed him as who he is. He he says nothing. But this woman stayed the course. She stayed in Jesus' presence. And even when the disciples asked to her to be dismissed, she stayed right there. She didn't listen to them saying, don't bother us. But this woman was unwavering in her faith, and she stayed right there. And finally, Jesus opens up his mouth. I was only sent to help the people of Israel, God's lost sheep not the Gentiles. Wow. I'm bowing, Jesus. I'm desperate. My daughter needs you, but you just said now that you didn't, you were not sent to me. But I'm here worshiping you as Lord. I called you by your proper title. And now you're telling me that you were not sent to me. What do you do with that information when Jesus finally speaks after he was silent? You're the deliverer. You're the savior. And I believe my faith tells me that it is you that I have to pray to. Do you not care, Jesus? What is going on? I thought that you came to save and deliver. That's what my faith is telling me. But the response of this woman was not one of being deterred, but she was more determined. She came again, and she worshiped him. She worked by worshiping that which her faith told her to. Not based on what she's receiving, not the rejection, not what Jesus is saying, because do you not know that desperate things take desperate matters? She 
you can't be an occasional dater. You can't be an occasional worshiper. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. But when you're desperate for something, you need to know that there's a God that can hear and answer you, even if he tells you something that you don't want to hear. She came and she worshiped and she begged and she pleaded again, Lord, help me. That's a prayer right there. Do you see this woman in our church today saying, Lord, I need you? And we send her away. Lord, I need you to intervene because my daughter is demon-possessed. Don't you care? And then Jesus responds, It is not right for me to take the food from the children of Israel and throw it to the dogs. Remember I said it was going to get rough, right? See, people like to have Jesus as painted as this meek, humble, and just lovable person, which he is. But there's a lesson within the lesson. See, Jesus is, is, is saying that I wasn't sent to you. I came to this region. But what happens when Jesus comes to your house? Huh? What will he find there? Will he find somebody that has faith in the son of David? Or will he find somebody that has been seeking something else other than him? Because you know that they worship demons in this region. That's why this one daughter was demon-possessed. The demon took residence in the house because God was not there. But now Jesus is in the neighborhood. And we got to remember, when we look back into this translation and the, the hearer that's hearing, the, the Greek hearers and the Aramaic hearers that's hearing Jesus talk about this, this, this parable, He's calling her in the Cain night family. See, dogs are in the canine family. And she is a Canaanite, which the Israelites thought of as dogs. They were beneath them. And here Jesus is saying, it's not good for me to take the food that I was sent to give to those that are lost in Israel. Because that's why I was sent. I'm clear, my father sent me to them first. So anybody has referred you to you as a dog? Has the police looked at our black men and call us dogs? Do they curse our very existence and think that we're not worthy? So they just shoot us on sight. Dogs. I would have a real problem with somebody calling me a dog. I think that you would too. But how many people have we called dogs because they live a lifestyle that's beneath ours? Words mean everything. But look at this woman and how she responds to the insult that Jesus is referring to because this is what society and the Israelites call them. She responded not in discouragement because of the insult, but she let her faith speak for her. Sometimes you got to let your faith speak for you. She accepted it and said, yes, Lord. Do you not know that you can get more with honey 
than you can with vinegar? Gotta get that one at four o'clock. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs are permitted to eat the crumbs that fall beneath their master's table. See, I'm still in the family, and even if my station and class and gender makes me beneath and a dog, I'm still at the table. Even if I'm underneath it, I can still get the crumbs. God, because if there's food being served, we don't always eat everything and discouraged or deterred, but keep holding on, church. Keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Yes, he was sent to the lost house of Israel, but even the Gentiles are welcome in the house. See, this lesson, it indicates that he was sent to the lost house of Israel first, but there must be a second. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So even the crumbs from the lost house is better than none at all. Persistent faith is what unlocks the healing and the deliverance. Salvation came to the Gentiles because of unwavering faith of this woman that wasn't named, that was identified by her region and her child's possession. Possession. But don't let nothing block your deliverance. Keep kneeling, keep praying, keep pleading, keep praying. Jesus will respond when he sees genuine trust, trust and he sees genuine faith. How many here want to celebrate that I'm going to keep on until you bless me? I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to be discouraged or deterred. I'm going to be determined. Why? Because my faith demands it. My faith says I'm desperate enough that if you don't do it, Jesus, it can't be done. But I know a God that has all power in his hand, the power to save, the power to set free, the power to deliver, the power to take a demon and excise it and say, go to the pigs. You can't occupy this house any longer. Sometimes we need Jesus to speak in our children's lives. But he first has to speak in your life. First he has to come and have a worship moment with you. You have to be desperate enough to say, I'm not going to stop, Lord, until you bless me. Anyhow you want to bless me, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship. I'm going to kneel. No matter what insults come my way, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to put my whole trust in you. My daughter's life depends on it. My son's life depends on it. I'm going to keep coming to the house of God until I get a breakthrough. Come on now. Oh, blessing. That's the kind of faith that God is looking for. He's looking at somebody that's willing to chase him. And even when he says not a word, 
And even if he tells us what we don't want to hear, I'm going to stay right here until you bless me. Is there that type of faith in the house today? Is there anybody that want to give the Lord a praise today? Because you have a child that needs to be delivered. You have a relative that needs to be delivered. There's someone that needs deliverance, but maybe you're not desperate enough. Persistent faith. That's how it's done. Don't be an occasional worshiper. worshiper. You got to be consistent to be persistent. Yeah. Oh, I want to say that one again. You got to be consistent in order to be persistent. God can't see occasional, but he can't see somebody that won't give up. He can't see somebody that's constant. Somebody that's in his presence, no matter what the response is, you stay right there. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. She took the position. She kept kneeling. She kept pleading. Until the Lord says, woman, your persistence. It's like none that I have seen in Israel. You call me son of David. Today, let it be so. As you wish. What is your wish today? Do you wish to be whole? Do you wish for your family to be whole? Who here has persistent faith and say, no matter what, no matter who's around me, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you until I get my blessing. According to my wish, your daughter is healed instantly. He didn't have to go to the house. He didn't have to lay hands on her. He just said it, and it was instantly. How many want an instant blessing? How many come because you need God just to speak, and it's done? Your faith, not your daughter's faith, your faith. Hallelujah! My faith can heal my children. Your faith can heal your children. All you have to do is be persistent and consistent. 